in my past videos, I've highlighted this important fact. Your portfolio should differentiate you from other candidates. It should not make you look the same as them. If you all have similar projects with similar methods, how are you really going to stand out and actually land your job? What does it truly mean to stand out though? Standing out can be done through novelty, impact, skill, or creativity. In this video, I highlight five projects that'll be sure to turn heads of prospective employers. Are you looking for a project that is out of this world, literally? Well, outer space is a good place to start. NASA collects and shares a huge amount of data about its missions, research, and activities for free online. With this incredible data set, you can look up data by planet or by space mission. You can even look into the life science data that NASA has been collecting from anything ranging from humans to beetles. It might be surprising, but they even have human resources data available from NASA as well. A simple project with this data could be a planet comparison dashboard or someone with prior knowledge or interest of space could do things that are far more impressive. For example, they could create an algorithm to classify space debris or even identify objects in images that the astronauts took. The next topic hits a little closer to home for me. So I have a question for you. Do you consume content of, of any form? You know, maybe a podcast, maybe YouTube videos or tweets. So what if I told you that this data from the channels that you love could be the topic of your next project? One of my own first projects was analyzing the text data from one of my personal favorite podcasts, Bigger Pockets. It's about real estate and investing. So many podcasts publish their transcripts of their data online for free because this helps with searchability. So you can go in and scrape this data and actually use it in a project. And I do have that Bigger Pockets podcast analysis available as a video that I've linked above. I am personally in the process of publishing my Ken's Nearest Neighbors podcast transcriptions and the transcriptions of a few other podcasts that I really enjoy. And I'm going to put them all in Kaggle over the next month or so. These are the perfect types of projects to explore natural language processing techniques topic modeling, or some other different use of visualization styles. If an interviewer also likes the podcast that you did your project on, you'll have plenty to talk about. It also isn't just podcasts either. In particular, YouTube has a really good API for scraping video descriptions, and there are some fairly reliable libraries for getting Twitter data as well. I've added some links in the comment section for how you can do that. Now, there aren't many things that are more valuable than a project that provides real world impact. And fortunately, there are plenty of free data sets that allow you to explore and potentially influence phenomena in the real world. The first of these is data from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. This is the data that I personally explored for the first challenge in Z by HP's Unlock movie. I have all of that stuff linked below as well. That exercise in Unlocked is a great place to get started, but it's only the beginning of the data that's accessible there. Through the FAO, you have global data on food production, food security, trade, forestry, sustainability, employment, and at least a dozen additional fascinating areas. This data is great for creating informative dashboards or for doing various forms of time series analysis. If you live in the US, another data set that might be directly relevant to you and to your community is the FBI Crime Data Explorer. This set has historic and in some cases real-time data on different types of crime by state. Again, this would be great for a descriptive analysis or maybe an inferential analysis to determine which crimes have increased rates based on state-specific policies. One of the most difficult parts of starting your first project is getting your environment set up. And sometimes you download libraries and they're just version conflicts or incompatibilities. The new Z by HP Data Science Software Stack Manager can help you get started without all the mess that I just described. It gives you a graphical user interface to download the data science software stack. The stack manager is a data science environment that Z by HP curates to avoid any environmental setup issues. Z by HP has specific options for most of the very popular tools that you'll be using on a daily basis. As a Z by HP ambassador, they've provided me with their hardware that I use for all of my everyday projects. Check out the link in the description to learn how you can start using the Data Science Stack Manager and the Data Science Stack today. Data science is moving faster than it has ever done before. It seems like GPT-3, which is a revolutionary algorithm, is now technically old news. From what I've heard, there are actually rumblings of GPT-4 coming out in the near future. The awesome thing about this domain is that you can have access to most of the cutting edge technology at a fairly low cost. A project that could open eyes would be leveraging some of the new language models or the new generative models into a simple website. A huge portion of data science is knowing how to use models after you've built them, and this is a great way to showcase those skills. 
One that is of personal interest to me is Dolly 2, which I'm still on the waitlist for. So if anyone can get me access, uh, I'd be eternally grateful. I personally enjoy seeing how people find unique applications for GANs and reinforcement learning as well. My friend Nick Renault has an awesome series where he uses reinforcement learning algorithms to play some of his favorite games from his youth. If you're working in tech, I expect at least one of your interviewers would be pretty interested in that project. The last type of project that I'd recommend is probably the most respected, but arguably the least attractive to most people. And that's contributing to open source libraries. So if you're using a library and you think of ways that you could potentially make it a little better, why would you not actually do that? My friend Stephanie Mullen was recently a bit frustrated with how some of the graphing methods operated in Pandas. She found that it was a bit clunky and she thought it could be frankly improved upon. It took her an afternoon, but she made some adjustments and submitted them. And guess what? They were approved by the code base. I know this seems like something very advanced, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. In a lot of libraries, they're in dire need of code examples of implementation. Sometimes just updating the readme with examples can make you a contributor to various projects. This is something that I see can very much differentiate you from the crowd. So I did my best to give you some flexibility within the domains of these projects. If I gave very specific projects, honestly, there'd very likely be a huge influx of them in the market, and then no one would really stand out anymore, right? With that being said, after this video, it's likely that the use of these data sets will increase, and you'll need to find additional ways to differentiate yourself again. Fortunately, you can get creative and find your own projects. Check out this video that I have next on how to come up with data science projects on your own. I hope this video gives you some fun ideas about how to separate yourself from the pack and do something useful with your project work. Until next time, good luck on your data science journey.